Great Expectations Great Expectations is the 13th novel by Charles Dickens and is penultimate completed novel. It depicts the education of an orphan nicknamed Pip. It is Dickens's second novel, after David Copperfield, to be fully narrated in the first person. The novel was first published as a serial in Dickens's weekly periodical all the year round from December 1, 1860 to August 1861. In October 1861, Chapman and Hall published the novel in three volumes. The novel is set in Kent and London in the early to mid-19th century and contains some of Dickens's most celebrated scenes, starting in a graveyard, where the young Pip is accosted by the escaped convict Abel Magwitch. Great Expectations is full of extreme imagery, poverty, prison ships and chains, and fights to the death, and has a colorful cast of characters who have entered popular culture. These include the eccentric Miss Havisham, the beautiful but cold Estella, and Joe, the unsophisticated and kind blacksmith. Dickens's themes include wealth and poverty, love and rejection, and the eventual triumph of good over evil. Great Expectations, which is popular both with readers and literary critics, has been translated into many languages and adapted numerous times into various media. Upon its release, the novel received near-universal acclaim. Although Dickens's contemporary Thomas Carlyle referred to it disparagingly as that pip nonsense, he nevertheless reacted to each fresh installment with roars of laughter. Later, George Bernard Shaw praised the novel, as all of one piece and consistently truthful. During the serial publication, Dickens was pleased with public response to great expectations and its sales. When the plot first formed in his mind, he called it a very fine, new and grotesque idea. In the 21st century, the novel retains good ratings among literary critics and in 2003 it was ranked 17th on the BBC's The Big Greed poll. First Stage. Pip is an orphan, about 7 years old who lives with his hot-tempered older sister and her kindly blacksmith husband Joe Gargery on the coastal marshes of Kent. On Christmas Eve 1812, Pip is visiting the graves of his parents and siblings. There, he unexpectedly encounters an escaped convict who threatens him with death if he does not bring back food and tools. Terrified, Pip steals a file from among Joe's tools and a pie and brandy that were meant for Christmas dinner, which he delivers to the convict. That evening, Pip's sister is about to look for the missing pie when soldiers arrive and ask Joe to mend some shackles. Joe and Pip accompany them into the marshes to recapture the convict, who is fighting with another escaped convict. The first convict confesses to stealing food clearing Pip. A few years pass. Miss Havisham, a wealthy and reclusive spinster, asks Mr. Pumblechook, a relation of the Gargaries, to find a boy to visit her. She was jilted at the altar and still wears her old wedding dress and lives in dilapidated Sati's house. Pip visits Miss Havisham and falls in love with Estella, her adopted daughter. Estella is aloof and hostile to Pip, which Miss Havisham encourages. During one visit, another boy picks a fist fight with Pip, who easily gains the upper hand. Estella watches, and allows Pip to kiss her afterwards. Pip visits Miss Havisham regularly, until he is old enough to learn a trade. Joe accompanies Pip for the last visit when she gives the money for Pip to be bound as an apprentice blacksmith. Joe's surly assistant, Dil Gorlick, is envious of Pip and dislikes Mrs. Joe. 
When Pip and Joe are away from the house, Joe's wife is brutally attacked, leaving her unable to speak or do her work. Orlick is suspected of the attack. Mrs. Joe changes and becomes kind-hearted after the attack. Pip's former schoolmate Biddy joins the household to help with her care. Four years into Pip's apprenticeship, Mr. Jaggers, a lawyer, informs him that he has been provided with money from an anonymous patron, allowing him to become a gentleman. Pip is to leave for London, but presuming that Miss Havisham is his benefactress, he first visits her. Second stage. Pip sets up house in London at Barnard's Inn with Herbert Pocket, the son of his tutor, Matthew Pocket, who is a cousin of Miss Havisham. Pip realizes Herbert is the boy he fought with years ago. Herbert tells Pip how Miss Havisham was defrauded and deserted by her fiancé. Pip meets fellow pupils, Bentley Drummill, a brute of a man from a wealthy noble family, and Startop, who is agreeable. Jaggers disperses the money Pip needs. During a visit, Pip meets Jaggers' housekeeper Molly, a former convict whom Jaggers later employed. When Joe visits Pip at Barnard's Inn, Pip is ashamed to be seen with him. Joe relays a message from Miss Havisham that Estella will be at Sati's house for a visit. Pip returns there to meet Estella and is encouraged by Miss Havisham, but he avoids visiting Joe. He is disquieted to see Orlick now in service to Miss Havisham. He mentions his misgivings to Jaggers, who promises Orlick's dismissal. Back in London, Pip and Herbert exchange their romantic secrets, Pip adores Estella and Herbert is engaged to Clara. Pip meets Estella when she is sent to Richmond to be introduced into society. Pip and Herbert build up debts. Mrs. Joe dies and Pip returns to his village for the funeral. Pip's income is fixed at £500 per annum when he comes of age at 21. With the help of Jaggers's clerk, Wemmick, Pip plans to help advance Herbert's future prospects by anonymously securing him a position with the shipbroker, Clerikers. Pip takes Estella to Sati's house. She and Miss Havisham quarrel over Estella's coldness. In London, Bentley Drummle outrages Pip, by proposing a toast to Estella. Later, at an assembly ball in Richmond, Pip witnesses Estella meeting Bentley Drummle and warns her about him. She replies that she has no qualms about entrapping him. A week after he turns 23 years old, Pip learns that his benefactor is the convict he encountered in the churchyard, Abel Magwitch, who had been transported to New South Wales after being captured. He has become wealthy after gaining his freedom there, but cannot return to England on pain of death. However, he returns to see Pip, who is the motivation for all his success. stage. Pip is shocked, and stops taking Magwitch's money. He and Herbert Pocket devise a plan for Magwitch to escape from England. Magwitch shares his past history with Pip, and reveals that the escaped convict whom he fought in the churchyard was Compeyson, the fraudster who had deserted Miss Havisham. Pip returns to Satis Hall to visit Estella and meets Bentley Drummill, who has also come to see her and now has Orlick as his servant. Pip accuses Miss Havisham of misleading him about his benefactor. She admits to doing so, but says that her plan was to annoy her relatives. Pip declares his love to Estella, who coldly tells him that she plans on marrying Dremel. Heartbroken, Pip walks back to London, where Wemma corns him that Compeyson is seeking him. Pip and Herbert continue preparations for Magwitch's escape. At Jagger's house for dinner, Wemmick tells Pip how Jagger's acquired his maidservant, Molly, 
rescuing her from the gallows when she was accused of murder. Then, full of remorse, Miss Havisham tells Pip how the infant Estella was brought to her by Jaggers and raised by her to be unfeeling and heartless. She knows nothing about Estella's parentage. She also tells Pip that Estella is now married. She gives Pip money to pay for Herbert Pocket's position at Clerikers, and asks for his forgiveness. As Pip is about to leave, Miss Havisham's dress catches fire. Pip saves her, injuring himself in the process. She eventually dies from her injuries, lamenting her manipulation of Estella and Pip. Pip now realizes that Estella is the daughter of Molly and Magwitch. When confronted about this, Jaggers discourages Pip from acting on his suspicions. A few days before Magwitch's planned escape, Pip is tricked by an anonymous letter into going to a sluice house near his old home, where he is seized by Orlick, who intends to murder him and freely admits to injuring Pip's sister. As Pip is about to be struck by a hammer, Herbert Pocket and Startop arrive and save Pip's life. The three of them pick up Magwitch to row him to the steamboat for Hamburg, but they are met by a police boat carrying Compeyson, who is offered to identify Magwitch. Magwitch seizes Compeyson, and they fight in the river. Seriously injured, Magwitch is taken by the police. Compeyson's body is found later. Pip is aware that Magwitch's fortune will go to the Crown after his trial. Herbert, who is preparing to move to Cairo, Egypt, to manage Clericker's office there, offers Pip a position there. Pip always visits Magwitch in the prison hospital as he awaits trial, and on Magwitch's deathbed tells him that his daughter Estella is alive. After Herbert's departure for Cairo, Pip falls ill in his room, and faces arrest for debt. However, Joe nurses Pip back to health and pays off his debt. When Pip begins to recover, Joe slips away. Pip then returns to propose to Biddy, only to find that she has married Joe. Pip asks Joe's forgiveness, promises to repay him and leaves for Cairo. There he shares lodgings with Herbert and Clara, and eventually advances to become third in the company. Only then does Herbert learn that Pip paid for his position in the firm. After working 11 years in Egypt, Pip returns to England and visits Joe, Biddy, and their son. Pip Jr. then, in the ruins of Satie's house, he meets the widowed Estella, who asks Pip to forgive her. Assuring him that her misfortune, and her abusive marriage to Drummle until his death, has opened her heart. As Pip takes Estella's hand, and they leave the moonlit ruins, he sees no shadow of another parting from her. Pip and his family. Philip Peer, nicknamed Pip, an orphan and the protagonist and narrator of Great Expectations. In his childhood, Pip dreamed of becoming a blacksmith like his kind brother-in-law, Joe Gargery. At Satie's house, about age 8, he meets and falls in love with Estella, and tells Biddy that he wants to become a gentleman. As a result of Magwitch's anonymous patronage, Pip lives in London after learning the blacksmith trade, and becomes a gentleman. Pip assumes his benefactor is Miss Havisham. The discovery that his true benefactor is a convict shocks him. Pip, at the end of the story, is united with Estella. Joe Gargery, Pip's brother-in-law, and his first father figure. He is a blacksmith who is always kind to Pip and the only person with whom Pip is always honest. Joe is disappointed when Pip decides to leave his home to live in London to become a gentleman rather than be a blacksmith in business with Joe. He is a strong man who bears the shortcomings of those closest to him. Mrs. Joe Gargery, Pip's hot-tempered adult sister, Georgiana Maria, called Mrs. Joe, is 20 years older than Pip. She brings him up after their parents' death. 
She does the work of the household but too often loses her temper and beats her family. Orlik, her husband's journeyman, attacks her during a botched burglary, and she is left disabled until her death. Mr. Pumblechoot, Joe Gargery's uncle, an officious bachelor and corn merchant. While not knowing how to deal with a growing boy, he tells Mrs. Joe, as she is known, how noble she is to bring up Pip. As the person who first connected Pip to Miss Havisham, he claims to have been the original architect of Pip's expectations. Pip just likes Mr. Pumblechook for his pompous, unfounded claims. When Pip stands up to him in a public place, after those expectations are dashed, Mr. Pumblechook turns those listening to the conversation against Pip. Miss Havisham and her family. Miss Havisham, a wealthy spinster who takes Pip on as a companion for herself and her adopted daughter, Estella. Havisham is a wealthy, eccentric woman who has worn her wedding dress and one shoe since the day that she was jilted at the altar by her fiancé. Her house is unchanged as well. She hates all men and plots to wreak a twisted revenge by teaching Estella to torment and spurn men, including Pip, who loves her. Miss Havisham is later overcome with remorse for ruining both Estella's and Pip's chances for happiness. Shortly after confessing her plotting to Pip and begging for his forgiveness, she is badly burned when her dress accidentally catches fire. In a later chapter Pip learns from Joe that she is dead. Estella, Miss Havisham's adopted daughter, whom Pip pursues. She is a beautiful girl and grows more beautiful after her schooling in France. Estella represents the life of wealth and culture for which Pip strives. Since Miss Havisham ruined Estella's ability to love, Estella cannot return Pip's passion. She warns Pip of this repeatedly, but he will not or cannot believe her. Estella does not know that she is the daughter of Molly, Jaggers's housekeeper, and the convict Abel Magwitch, given up for adoption to Miss Havisham after her mother was arrested for murder. In marrying Bentley Drummill, she rebels against Miss Havisham's plan to have her break a husband's heart, as Drummill is not interested in Estella but simply in the Havisham fortune. Matthew Pocket Miss Havisham's cousin. He is the patriarch of the Pocket family, but unlike her other relatives, he is not greedy for Havisham's wealth. Matthew Pocket tutors young gentlemen, such as Bentley Drummill, Startop, Pip and his own son Herbert. Herbert Pocket, the son of Matthew Pocket, who was invited like Pip to visit Miss Havisham, but she did not take to him. Pip first meets Herbert as a pale young gentleman who challenges Pip to a fist fight at Miss Havisham's house when both are children. He later becomes Pip's friend, tutoring him in the gentlemanly arts and sharing his rooms with Pip in London. Camilla, one of the sisters of Matthew Pocket, and therefore a cousin of Miss Havisham, she is an obsequious, detestable woman who is intent on pleasing Miss Havisham to get her money. Cousin Raymond, a relative of Miss Havisham who is only interested in her money. He is married to Camilla. Georgiana, a relative of Miss Havisham who is only interested in her money. She is one of the many relatives who hang around Miss Havisham like flies for her wealth. Sarah Pocket, the sister of Matthew Pocket relative of Miss Havisham. She is often at Sati's house. She is described as a dry, brown corrugated old woman, with a small face that might have been made out of walnut shells, and a large mouth like a cat's without the whiskers. From Pip's youth. The convict who escapes from a prison ship, whom Pip treats kindly, and who in turn becomes Pip's benefactor. 
His name is Abel Magwitch, but he uses the aliases Provis and Mr. Campbell when he returns to England from exile in Australia. He is a lesser actor in crime with Compeyson, but gains a longer sentence in an apparent application of justice by social class. Mr. and Mrs. Hubble, simple folk who think they are more important than they really are. They live in Pip's village. Mr. Wopsil, clerk of the church in Pip's village. He later gives up the church work and moves to London to pursue his ambition to be an actor. Adopting the stage name Mr. Walden Garver. He sees the other convict in the audience of one of his performances, attended also by Pip. Biddy, Wopsil's second cousin and near Pip's age, she teaches in the evening school at her grandmother's home in Pip's village. Pip wants to learn more, so he asks her to teach him all she can. After helping Mrs. Joe after the attack, Biddy opens her own school. A kind and intelligent but poor young woman, she is, like Pip and Estella, an orphan. She acts as Estella's foil. Orlick was attracted to her, but she did not want his attentions. Pip ignores her affections for him as he pursues Estella. Recovering from his own illness after the failed attempt to get Magwitch out of England, Pip returns to claim Biddy as his bride, arriving in the village just after she marries Joe Gargery. Biddy and Joe later have two children, one named after Pip. In the ending to the novel discarded by Dickens but revived by students of the novel's development, Estella mistakes the boy as Pip's child. As Dickens began writing Great Expectations, he undertook a series of hugely popular and remunerative reading tours. His domestic life had, however, disintegrated in the late 1850s and he had separated from his wife, Catherine Dickens, and was having a secret affair with the much younger Ellen Turnlin. It has been suggested that the icy teasing of the character Estella is based on Ellen Turnlin's reluctance to become Dickens's mistress. Great Expectations is single most obvious literary predecessor is Dickens's earlier first-person narrator protagonist David Copperfield. The two novels trace the psychological and moral development of a young boy to maturity, his transition from a rural environment to the London metropolis. The vicissitudes of his emotional development, and the exhibition of his hopes and youthful dreams and their metamorphosis, through a rich and complex first-person narrative. Dickens was conscious of this similarity and, before undertaking his new manuscript, reread David Copperfield to avoid repetition. The two books both detail homecoming. Although David Copperfield is based on some of Dickens's personal experiences, Great Expectations provides, according to Paul Schlicke, the more spiritual and intimate autobiography. Even though several elements hint at the setting, Miss Havisham, partly inspired by a Parisian duchess, whose residence was always closed and in darkness, surrounded by a dead green vegetable sea, recalling Satie's house, aspects of Restoration House that inspired Satie's house, and the nearby countryside bordering Chatham and Rochester. No place name is mentioned, nor a specific time period, which is generally indicated by, among other elements, older coaches, the title His Majesty in reference to George III, and the old London Bridge prior to the 1824-1831 reconstruction. The theme of homecoming reflects events in Dickens's life several years prior to the publication of Great Expectations. In 1856, he bought Gad's Hill Place in Higham, Kent, which he had dreamed of living in as a child, and moved there from far away London two years later. In 1858, in a painful marriage breakdown, 
he separated from Catherine Dickens, his wife of 23 years. The separation alienated him from some of his closest friends, such as Mark Lemon. He quarreled with Bradbury and Evans, who had published his novels for 15 years. In early September 1860, in a field behind Gads Hill, Dickens burned almost all of his correspondence, sparing only letters on business matters. He stopped publishing the weekly Household Words at the summit of its popularity and replaced it with all the year round. The Uncommercial Traveler, Short Stories, and other texts Dickens began publishing in his new weekly in 1859 reflect his nostalgia, as seen in Dullborough Town and Nurses' Stories. According to Paul Schlicke, it is hardly surprising that the novel Dickens wrote at this time was a return to roots, set in the part of England in which he grew up. And in which he had recently resettled. Margaret Cardwell draws attention to Chops the Dwarf from Dickens's 1858 Christmas story going into society, too, as the future Pip does. Entertains the illusion of inheriting a fortune and becomes disappointed upon achieving his social ambitions. In another vein, Harry Stone thinks that gothic and magical aspects of Great Expectations were partly inspired by Charles Matthews's At Home. Which was presented in detail in Household Words and its monthly supplement Household Narrative. Stone also asserts that the lazy tour of two idle apprentices, written in collaboration with Wilkie Collins after their walking tour of Cumberland during September 1857 and published in Household Words from 3 to 31 October of the same year, presents certain strange locations and a passionate love, foreshadowing great expectations. Beyond its biographical and literary aspects, Great Expectations appears, according to Robin Gilmore, as a representative fable of the age. Dickens was aware that the novel speaks to a generation applying, at most, the principle of self-help which was believed to have increased the order of daily life. That the hero Pip aspires to improve, not through snobbery, but through the Victorian conviction of education, social refinement, and materialism, was seen as a noble and worthy goal. However, by tracing the origins of Pip's great expectations to crime, deceit and even banishment to the colonies, Dickens unfavorably compares the new generation to the previous one of Joe Gargery, which Dickens portrays as less sophisticated but especially rooted in sound values, presenting an oblique criticism of his time.